So nice to relax, and so nice to go to sleep, that's right. Soon you will be asleep, soon you will be asleep. fainted. A man bends over her. He is dragging her away. Just relax. Sit down. Relax. You will do exactly as my voice tells you. Hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell. It has been labeled as the golden age of the cinema, filled with big stars and lavish productions. And during those years, hypnosis found a way to be included in many of these productions. The Seventh Veil, released in 1945, explores the therapeutic use of hypnosis. A brilliant concert pianist is suffering from a delusion that she has lost the use of her hands. attempted suicide before? No, never. I see. What is her occupation? She's a well-known concert pianist. I've heard her play several times. She does not speak at all. If you question her... She doesn't answer. One would think that she didn't hear one if one didn't know that she does. She will talk to me. I should like to examine her again tomorrow under hypnosis. Rather, she's not cooperating under narcosis. And you really think that will help? It may do. At least it'll tell us the nature of the injury to her mind. Oh, I know you fellows get some remarkable results, but I can't say I altogether like it. It savors a little of, uh, of prying, if you see what I mean. Dr. Kendall, the surgeon doesn't operate without first taking off the patient's clothes. Well, nor do we with the mind. You know what uh, Staple says? The human mind is like Salome at the beginning of her dance hidden from the outside world by seven veils. Veils of reserve, shyness, fear. Now with friends, the average person will drop first one veil, then another, maybe three or four altogether. With a lover, she will take a five, or even six. But never the seventh. Never, you see, the human mind likes to cover its nakedness too and keep its private thoughts to itself. Salome dropped her seventh veil of her own free will, but you will never get the human mind to do that. And that is why I use narcosis. Five minutes under narcosis and down comes the seventh veil. And we can see what is actually going on behind it. And then we can really help. Oh well. I'll be back tomorrow at three o'clock. You'll have the patient ready, please. Goodbye, Dr. Kendall. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good afternoon, nurse. Good afternoon, doctor. Well, how is the patient today? Just the same, doctor. I would like you to prepare an injection. This is just to put her to sleep the first time. Later on, when she is cooperating, she'll be able to get along without it. I shall start as soon as you are ready. Good afternoon, Miss Cunningham. My name is Larson. I trust you slept well. Oh, you didn't. That is a pity, a great pity. When one doesn't sleep, one isn't very happy. Well, never mind, never mind. I shall get a little sleep now.
I want you to breathe deeply. Now we'll have a little sleep. You're very tired and you'd like to go to sleep. Relax now. That's right. Relax and close your eyes. Gently. Very slowly. You're so tired. So terribly tired. So lazy. And you want to go to sleep. It's so nice to relax. It's so nice to go to sleep. That's right. Soon you will be asleep. Soon you will be asleep. There. You are asleep. Nothing can hurt you now because you are asleep. You understand, don't you? Nod your head if you do. That's right. Now, you can do what you like, and you can go where you please. What would you like to do? Where would you like to go? Hmm? Would you like to go back to school? You were happy when you were a little girl, weren't you? Would you like to go back and be happy again? Back to school. School. Yes? School. Yes, tell me about it. School. Listen. You are 14 years of age now. How old are you? I'm 14. That is right. You are 14 and you are at school. School. Look out. He's getting away, mind. Oh, look, he's escaping. Oh, goody. <laughs> look out, you'll fall. Don't be sorry. Of course I won't. Thank you, nurse. Your coat, doctor. I'll be back tomorrow at five o'clock. Yes, doctor. Uh, shall I have another injection ready? No, that won't be necessary. Miss Cunningham and I are friends now. So, here we have Francesca Cunningham's case history. The caning at school, resulting in the failure at the music examination and the fear that her hands might be injured, the attempt by her guardian to smash her hands, finally the car crash, the shock of finding herself in hospital with her hands bandaged. Now, all these things together have produced a fixation, barrier in the patient's subconscious mind, which is now preventing her full recovery. It is this barrier which we now have to break down. And I believe I have found the way to do it. That's why I've put her under hypnosis. Now, with the help of music, music which we know she loves, I'm going to suggest to her the way to conquer this fixation. If I can make her play the piano, I shall wake her up while she's actually playing. And then she will know that there is nothing really wrong with her hands. I've got some records here made by Miss Cunningham a few years ago. I propose to play one of them in a moment. You put this on, will you? Now, Miss Cunningham, I want you to listen to me carefully and do exactly as I tell you. You understand, don't you? Right. Now, give me your hand and get up. Right. I want you to come with me. I want you to sit down here at the piano. That's right. Now, would you like to hear some music today? Nod to me if you want me to play you some music. Good. There. 
Here's your music, just as I promised you. Isn't it beautiful? Don't you want to play it yourself? Play? Yes. Don't you want to play? I can't. Yes, I can't. yes, you can. You can if you want to. And you do want to, don't you? Not to me if you want to. Then play. Your hands are on the keys now. Your hands want to play. You want to play, don't you? Try. Try. I would like to speak to you for a moment, please. Certainly. I have just come from the nursing home. They told me that you have removed Miss Cunningham from their care. Is that so? Yes. Mr. Layton, I feel it my duty to go on treating her. I'm sorry, Doctor. After what has happened, surely even you will agree that she has suffered enough. She will go on suffering until she is cured. All she needs is rest. Yes, that's, that's for her body, not her mind. Her mind will restore itself if she's left alone. No, her mind needs treatment. Treatment? Your treatment is likely to unhinge her mind altogether. Mr. Layton, are you aware of the responsibility if you prevent me from finishing my treatment? It is Miss Cunningham who will have to pay for it with more suffering. And one day you will have to come back to me. Only then it might be too late. I'm sure I can get results if we carry on right away. I'm sorry, Doctor. Very well. How is she today? Fine, thank you. I see. Mr. Layton, this is all wrong. This is all wrong. I do not want to fail with this particular case. Would you mind if I went to Miss Cunningham's guardian? and asked his permission to treat her. Not at all. Only he won't be her guardian much longer. No, why is that? We are to be married next week. Oh, I see. Excuse me, but uh, have you got her consent? I propose to ask her. Mr. Layton, that poor girl is in no condition to make up her mind on anything at the moment. I warn you. What you're doing is very dangerous. I'm prepared to take the risk, Doctor. Very well. Good day. Good day. Dr. Larson. It is good of you to see me. Take a seat. 
Thank you. Your business? I have come to ask your assistance in a case in which I'm working. What is the case? The name of my patient is Miss Cunningham. Francesca Cunningham. Well? Miss Cunningham is your niece and... She's my second cousin. I see. Well, she has lived with you here in this house and I take it you have often heard her play the piano, practicing and so on. What is all this leading up to? I have a record here. It is of a tune which has assumed some importance in the case. I wonder if I could play it to you. And if you would be good enough to tell me whether you know anything about it. Whether perhaps it has any sentimental associations. Or is connected with anyone she knew. Go ahead. Thank you. Don't expect me to know anything about her private affairs. It is always possible. to thank you. You have helped me after all. I always knew of the power you have over Miss Cunningham. But now I know why. I know what she means to you. I'm afraid I should have explained to you at once, but uh, the music has uh, put it out of my head. Yes, now I think I can promise you a complete cure. But uh, you have to prepare yourself for a new Francesca. A new and a very different person. In what way? You see, the past is over for her now, quite over. Her mind is clear and the clouds have been swept away. She's no longer afraid. Whether you will be entirely satisfied with... Uh, the change in her, I don't know. But it might be wise not to expect too much. Are you trying to tell me she... I'm trying to tell you she will want to be with the one she loves, or the one she's been happiest with, or the one she cannot do without, or the one she trusts. And who's that? It would hardly be fair of me to say. forty-five's The Frozen Ghost was the fourth in a series of six Inner Sanctum mystery films. Lon Chaney stars as Gregor the Great, a stage mentalist and hypnotist who, during his act, 
hypnotizes his partner Mora and has her predict the future. You are only receptive to the thought waves of this audience. During a performance, a heckler agrees to be hypnotized after claiming that it's all done with mirrors. Unless you're willing to cooperate. Hey, Mabel, didn't I tell you this guy is a phony? The man dies during the induction, and even though the man was clearly drunk, Cheney still feels responsible and vows to abandon the act and never use hypnosis again. Later, in order to solve the murder of two women, Cheney again hypnotizes Mara in front of a skeptical detective, and to his surprise, she is able to name the killer. At the end of the film, the detective asks Cheney, I wonder if you could put me in a trance. Oh, Inspector, I, I thought you knew. It's all done with mirrors. Next time on Hypnosis in the Media. Your power to resist my will is vanishing. Your will is becoming my will. Slowly but surely. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Hypnosis in the Media. I'm Meg Register, a certified clinical hypnotherapist, as well as an advisor and co-producer of the series. If you're interested in learning more about hypnosis, I welcome you to contact me for a free phone consultation to find out if hypnotherapy can work for you.